Apples. My birthday is October 10th. I like my birthday. 10 out of 10. It would have been great if I'd born at exactly 10, 10 in the morning or at night, but I wasn't. I was born just after midnight, but I still think my birthday is cool. I usually have a little party at home, but this year I asked mum if I could have a big bowling party. Mum was surprised but happy. She asked me who I wanted to ask from my class, and I said everyone in my homeroom plus Summer. That's a lot of kids, Augie, said mum. I have to invite everyone because I don't want anyone to get their feelings hurt if they found out other people are invited and they aren't, okay? Okay, mum agreed. You can even you even want to invite the what's the deal kid? Yeah, you can invite Julian, I answered. Jeez, Mum, you should forget about that already. I know, you're right. A couple of weeks later, I asked Mum who was coming to my party and said Jack Will, Summer, Ree Kingsley, both Maxes, and a couple of other kids said they were going to try to be there. Like who? Charlotte's mum said Charlotte had a dance recital earlier in the day, but she's going to try to come to your party if time allowed, and Tristan's mum said he might come after a soccer game. So that's it, I said. That's like five people. That's more than five people, Augie. I think a lot of people just have plans already, Mum answered. We were in the kitchen. She was cutting one of the apples we'd just gotten at the farmer's market into tinsy wincy pieces so I could eat it. What kind of plans, I asked. I don't know, Augie. We sent the invites kind of late. Like, what did they tell you, though? What reasons did they give? Everyone gave different reasons, Augie. She sounded a bit impatient. Really, sweetie, it shouldn't matter what their reasons were. People have plans, that's all. Did Julian give his reasons? I asked. You know, she said. His mum was the only person who didn't RSV at all. She looked at me. I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I laughed because I thought she was making a joke. But then I realised she wasn't. What does that mean? I asked. Never mind. Go wash your hands so you can eat. My birthday party turned out to be much smaller than I thought it would be. But it was still great. Jack, Summer, Reed, Tristan and both Maxes came from school. And Christopher came too all the way from Bridgeport with his parents. And Uncle Ben came, and Aunt Kate, and Uncle Poe drove in from Boston, though Totter and Popper were in Florida for the winter. It was fun because all the grown-ups ended up bowling in the lane next to ours, so it really felt that there were a lot of people there to celebrate my birthday. Halloween. At lunch the next day, someone asked me what I was going to be for Halloween. Of course, I'd been thinking about it since last Halloween, so I knew right away. Boba Fett. You know you can wear a costume to hat school on Halloween, right? No way, really? So long as it is politically correct. What, like no guns or stuff? Exactly. What about blasters? I think a blaster's like a gun organ. Oh man, I said, shaking my head. Boba Fett was a blaster. At least we don't have to come like a character in a book anymore. In the lower school, that's what you had to do. Last year, I was the Wicked Witch of the West and it was Oz. That's a movie, not a book. Hello, someone answered. It was a book first. One of my favourite books in the world, actually. My dad used to read it to me every night in the first grade. When Summer talks, especially when she's excited about something, her eyes squint like she's looking right at the sun. I hardly ever see Summer during the day, since the only class we have together is English. But ever since that first lunch at school, we've sat at the summer table together every day, just the two of us. So what are you going to be? I asked her. I don't know yet. I know what I really want to go as, but I think it might be too dorky. You know, Savannah's group isn't even wearing costumes this year. They think we're too old for Halloween. What? That's just dumb. I know, right? I thought you didn't care what those girls think. She shrugged and took a long drink of her milk. So what dorky thing do you want to dress up as? I asked her, smiling. Promise not to laugh? She raised her eyebrows and shoulders embarrassed. A unicorn. I smiled and looked down on my sandwich. Hey, you promised not to laugh, she laughed. Okay, okay, I said, but you're right, that is too dorky. I know, she said, but I have it all planned out. I'd make the head out of paper mache and paint the gold horn and make the main gold too. It would be so awesome. Okay, I shrugged. Then you should do it. Who cares what other people think, right? Maybe what I'll do is just wear it for Halloween parade, she said, snapping her fingers. I'll just be like a goth girl for school. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'll do. Sounds like a plan, I nodded. Thanks, Augie, she giggled. You know that's what I like best about you. I feel like I can tell you anything. Yeah, I answered, nodding. I gave her a thumbs up sign. Cool beans. School pictures. I don't think anyone will be shocked to learn. I don't want to have my school picture taken on October 22nd. No way. No, thank you. I stopped letting anyone take pictures of me a while ago. I guess you call it a phobia. No, actually, it's not a phobia. It's an aversion, which is a word I learned in Mr. Brown's class. 
I have an aversion to having my pitch taken. Therefore, I use it in a sentence. I thought mum would try to get me to drop my aversion to having my picture taken for school, but she didn't. Unfortunately, while I managed to avoid having the portrait taken, I couldn't be out of being part of the class picture. Ugh. The photographer looked like he just sucked on a lemon when he saw me. I'm sure he thought I ruined the picture. I was one of the ones in the front sitting down. I didn't smile, not that anyone could tell if I had. The cheese touch. I noticed not too long ago that even though people were getting used to me, no one would really touch me. I don't realise I didn't realise this at first because it's not like kids go around touching each other that much in middle school anyway. But last Thursday in dance class, which is like my least favourite class, Mrs. Antabe, the teacher, tried to make Zimmy in a chin be my dance partner. Now, I've never actually seen someone have a panic attack before, but I've heard about it, and I'm pretty sure Zamina had a panic attack at that second. She got really nervous, turned pale, and literally broke into a sweat within a minute, and then she came up with some lame excuse about really having to go to the bathroom. Anyway, Miss Antonibi let her off the hook because she ended up not making anyone dance together. Then yesterday in my science elective, we were doing this cool mystery powder investigation where we had to classify a substance as an acid or a base. Everyone had to heat their mystery powders on a heating plate and make observations, so we were all huddled around the powders with our notebooks. Now, there are eight kids in the elective, and seven of them are squished together on one side of the plate, while one of them, me, had loads of room on the other side. So, of course, I noticed this, but I was hoping Miss Rubin wouldn't notice this because I didn't want her to say something. Because, but of course she did notice this, and of course she said something. Guys, there's plenty of room on that side. Tristan, Nino, go over there, she said. So Tristan and Nino scooted over to my side. Tristan and Nino had always been okay, nice to me. I want to go on the record as saying that. Not super nice, like they'd go out of the way to hang out with me, but okay nice, like they say hello to me and talk to me like normal. And they don't even make a face when Miss Rubin told them to come on my side, which a lot of kids do when they think I'm not looking. Anyway, everything was going fine until Tristan's mystery powder started melting. He moved his foil off the plate just as my powder began to melt too, which is why I went to move mine off the plate and then my hand accidentally bumped his hand for a fraction of a second. Tristan jerked his hand away so fast he dropped his foil on the floor whilst knocking everyone else's foil off the heating plate. Tristan! yelled Mrs Rubin, but Tristan didn't even care about the spilled powder on the floor or that he ruined the experiment. What he was most concerned about was that getting to the lab sink to wash his hands as fast as possible. That's when I knew for sure there was a thing about touching me at Beecher Prep. I think it's like the cheese touching Di Wimpy Kid. The kids in that story were afraid they'd catch the cooties if they touched the old mouldy cheese on the basketball court. At Beecher Prep, I'm the old mouldy cheese. Costumes. For me, Halloween is the best holiday in the world. It even beats Christmas. I get to dress up in a costume. I get to wear a mask. I get to go around like every other kid in a mask and no one thinks I look weird. Nobody takes a second look. Nobody notices me. Nobody knows me. I wish every day could be Halloween. We could all wear masks all the time. Then we could walk around and get to know each other before we got to see what each other looked like under the masks. When I was little, I used to wear an astronaut helmet everywhere I went. To the playground, to the supermarket, to to pick Via up from the school. Even in the middle of summer, though it was so hot my face would sweat. I think I wore it for a couple of years, but I had to stop wearing it when I had my eye surgery. I was about seven, I think. And then we couldn't find the helmet after that. Mum looked everywhere for it. She figured that it probably ended up in Grand's attic, and she kept meaning to look for it. But then I guess I had gotten used to not wearing it. I have pictures of me in all my Halloween costumes. My first Halloween, I was a pumpkin. My second, I was Tigger. My third, I was Peter Pan. My dad dressed up as Captain Hook. My fourth, I was Captain Hook. My dad dressed up as Peter Pan. My fifth, I was an astronaut. My sixth, I was Obi-Wan Kenobi. My seventh, I was, I was a clone trooper. My eighth, I was Darth Vader. My ninth, I was the leading scream. The one that has fake blood oozing out over the school mask. This year, I'm going as Boba Fett. Not Boba Fett the kid from Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, but Boba Fett, the man from Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Mum searched everywhere for the costume but couldn't find one in my size, so she bought me a Django Fett costume, since Django and Boba's dad wore the same armour and then painted the armour green. She did some other cool stuff to it to make it look worn too. Anyway, it looks totally real. Mum's good at costumes. In homeroom, we all talked about where we'd be going for Halloween. Charlotte was going as Hermione from Harry Potter. Jack was going as a Wolfman. I heard that Julian was going as Django Fett, which is a weird coincidence. I don't think he liked hearing that I was going as Boba Fett. On the morning of Halloween, Vaya had this big crying meltdown about something. 
Fine's always been so calm and cool, but this year she had a couple of these kind of fits. Dad was late for work and was like, Vaya, let's go, let's go. Usually Dad is super patient about things, but not when it comes to his being late for work and his yelling just stressed Vaya out even more. And she started crying louder. So Mum and Dad, Mum told Dad to take me to school and she'd deal with Vaya. The Mum kissed me goodbye quickly before I even put my costume on and disappeared into Vaya's room. Orgy, let's go now, said Dad. I have a meeting I can't be late for. I haven't put my costume on yet, so put it on already. Five minutes, I'll meet you outside. I rushed to my room and started to put on my Boba Fett costume, but all of a sudden I didn't feel like wearing it. I'm not sure why. Maybe because it had all these belts that needed to be tightened and I needed somebody help, to help me put it on. Or maybe it was because I, it still smelled like paint. All I knew was that it was a lot of work to put the costume on and Dad was waiting and would get super impatient if I made him late. So at the last minute, I threw on the bleeding scream costume from last year. It was such an easy costume, just a long black robe and a big white mask. I yelled goodbye from the door on my way out, but Mum didn't even hear me. I thought you were going to Django Fett, said Dad when I got outside. Boba Fett? Whatever, Dad said. This is a better costume anyway. Yeah, it's cool, I answered.